Hey guys, welcome to the Tom Reefer Studio. Here's the 20 gallon mixed reef cube. And up top we have the five gallon nano LPS dominated. And in the back we have the six gallon tall, 22 inches high by eight inches wide and deep. And over here we have the 10 gallon peninsula reef and that's a mixed reef. And today we're gonna answer all the questions on Water Change Wednesday. And it happens in here. All right. It's Tom Reefer again. Here I am, guys. Let's see if you can notice my first question for Water Change Wednesday for you guys is see if you can notice something different about the studio. All right, let's get into it. Water Change Wednesday. I got some new subscribers, so that's awesome. Welcome to you guys, new subscribers. Thanks so much. The algorithm's finally pushing my videos in front of new people, so that's awesome. And welcome aboard the Tom Reefer train. I had a couple lighting questions this week. Richard's upgrading his lights over his 250 gallon. He's upgrading to, uh, what did he, a uh, Radeon XR15 Blues, man. I think those are really nice lights. The basic question that Richard asks is about light acclimation. You want to gradually increase your lights over probably a two to three week period, sometimes four. What I told him is if he had a PAR meter, the best way to do it without too much of a transition and too much of a time lag is if you can get a PAR reading of specific parts of your tank before you upgrade your lights and then when you get your new lights try to get your new lights to match the same par reading so then there's really no need for acclimating at all but a lot of us don't have par meters so the safest way you want to start low watch your corals that's the key if some of the ones that you had were opened and you put the new light on and they're kind of withdrawn they're not opening up as fully as you would like then you can increase your light. There's another way you can do it too, Richard. I didn't mention this in here. You can actually go to quite a bright light setting where you know everything will be okay with say your higher light corals. But what you can do is get screen. You get vinyl screening and you cut small squares out of this and you place that screen or the layers of the screen on top of the tank lid or wh whatever you have on the top. The more layers of screen you have on top of each other, the less light it lets through. And then each day you can pull one screen off. It's really a cool method. I learned it years ago and that's a great way if you're putting a new coral into a tank and you don't want to readjust all your lighting. You put it where you want it. If it's in a highlight area you'll just add more of these screens. So you get it to a point where the screens are kind of shading the area that the coral's in and then you start pulling them off one at a time until you get down to one screen. So you could do this over a two week period. It depends on how much light you want to let through or what type of coral it is. I had a few people who asked who was interviewing me and I'll show you in the next up and coming videos who that was. Anthony asked, plain and simple, how do you make corals grow faster? 
And I had responded to him, it depends on what type of corals you're trying to make grow faster. Each coral, Anthony, has a specific way that it grows. So for example, I had told him SPS need very good parameters. They need calcium and alkalinity to be balanced, and they need to be a little on the high side. There's specific numbers, so 420 to 450 calcium, and 8 to 10 DKH in that range. You can also feed SPS amino acids. There's really not too many that take meaty type foods, so LPS also require a decent amount of calcium because their skeleton is calcium, but they require meaty foods, most of them. So I feed my Duncans and a little bit to my hammer. It doesn't readily like take in food, my hammer, uh, but it does absorb some of the fine particulate that floats around from the food, but my Duncans I feed. So certain LPS or most LPS, you have to feed. That'll encourage growth. But leather coral are tolerant of nitrate. So if you have a little bit more nitrate in your water, uh, that's okay for soft corals and that'll help them grow too, actually. A little more nitrate in your water. Maybe five parts, 10 maximum. You know, I mean, some can go higher, but if you don't have algae, don't worry about what your numbers are. answer a couple of these guys here I'm falling down on my job guys all right thank you Robert I'm gonna respond right now with the smiley face thumbs up there it goes a beautiful place you have there thank you Robert I appreciate it. yeah the Tom reefer studio is an awesome place to hang out in really it's I come and bury myself in here I'm always in here always either watching TV or watching the tanks or working on the tanks or having my coffee in the morning. This is my room. BBBLAI1 said, too much talking in the last video. All right, uh, too much blah, blah. Okay, that's Tom Reefer. Paula asks about why a yellowtail goes after the six line wrasse when her blue lights come on. <laughs> I guess she maybe at, at night she does a blue light thing and when they're not on he becomes a perfect fish again. Paula, I have no clue. All right guys, that does it for this one. I think it's enough. I agree. We'll see you on the next one. See, I got that done tonight. I'm getting tired. I said get everything back to normal. Settings back. Tom Reefer has just got to get in front of the camera. Off, off.